Okay. Uh, I deeply apologize for the crudeness of the way I'm having to film this. Uh, there'll be a video coming out later a little bit about me personally and stuff, but um, that's not part of this subject. Uh, what you're looking at here is a few neural transmitters. You're going to see these drawings anytime you look up an organic compound, which is what we're dealing with here when we're talking about alkaloids, DMT being one of them. Um, I want to briefly explain what these shorthand drawings mean and how to read them. You don't have to really know the chemistry to sort of understand what you're looking at. Uh, you'll see a lot of stuff like this anytime you look up medicines, any of the alkaloid families, basically any organic comp compound or molecule, you're going to see these pictures. And I, I want to just briefly go over what they mean. And uh, I also want to talk about a couple of these basic equations here, not the ones on the right. Those are those are nasty calculus. We don't want to go there. Uh, so these three here with the pH and pKa. I want to explain what these mean and a little bit of how to use these. Uh, they're pretty basic. This will give you the tools to better understand not only this extraction, but any future extractions you might do involving other compounds. Uh, anytime you deal with most of the time what these are, they're called acid-base extractions. And what we're doing is we're manipulating the pH, the, the acidic, acidity of the solution to turn the compound either into a water-soluble salt or an insoluble free base. And by doing this, we can mimic which solvents it dissolves in, and that's how we extract things, which is what we're going to be doing in the DMT video. Um, if I show you an instruction video, you'll know how to do that, and that's all you'll know how to do. And if anything messes up, you don't really know how to correct it. But if I explain a couple of these things in the basics, you'll have a little bit of a tool not only to do this extraction, but to maybe further in-depth understand what's actually going on so if something goes wrong you're possibly able to correct it well, and you can also apply this to other extractions as this is a general method so you know get, giving you the knowledge to actually understand what you're doing rather than just give you instructions of how to do it to me I think that's more beneficial if you're not interested in that then just skip this video and wait for the next one but if you are, that's what I'm going to talk about for the next couple of minutes. Uh, one other thing, we was talking about equipment. You see right here, these are called separation funnels or separatory flasks. So they're, they're pointed. The way these work, um, you, you put, like if you're, most of the time when you're extracting alkaloids, you start with a, a water-soluble acidified water and boil it for a few hours or whatever. Then usually after that, you bring the pH up, and uh, you'll usually extract it with toluene, naphtha, some kind of organic solvent, which is not mixable with water. It floats on top of water like, like gas does. These funnels are very good at separating the two layers. When you pour them in, they're shaped like a V. You let them separate. You know, the organic layer will be on top. The water floats on bottom, and you use this little valve right here See, there's a little hole in there. When you turn this, you can slowly drain off the bottom layer. And when the organic layer gets down there, you close it and you throw away the water that poured off. And then you've got just the organic layer on top. See, they come in different sizes, a 125, a 250, and a half liter flask. These are really good at doing extraction. You can let the layers separate in a uh, quart jar or any kind of glass apparatus. But the problem is when you try to pour the layers off, if you try to pour it out, the, the fluid slants as you slant the, device, the container it's in, and both layers still want to pour out at the same time. You can use a dropper or something to, you know, remove fluid from one layer and not the other. But when you're dealing with, you know, one or two liters of liquid, using a dropper could be very slow and tedious. These are excellent at separating stuff. You know, if you don't want to invest, you can use other things. But if you're looking to do more than one or two extractions, you can find these. Um, they're called separatory funnels. You can find them on eBay, Amazon sometimes. They're not, they're not that expensive, maybe in the $10 to $20 range, just buying them by themselves. Also, another thing I would recommend that's not too expensive is one of these. This is a pH meter. 
it's a digital digital pH meter. The way it works, it's pretty simple. You just take this off, turn it on, stick stick it down in the solution, and it will give you a, a pH reading. pH is everything when you're doing an extraction, having the right pH. Okay, now let's talk about just for a second a couple of these things. Now, pH. pH is basically the tendency to be an acid or a base in a aqueous water environment. For example, let's see. Um, let me first do the organic drawings. When you've seen this on the paper, that's a benzene ring. The way these organic drawings work like this, anytime you see these lines, that's an acid, by the way. What these lines represent, it's a shortcut way of drawing organic molecules. At each point, there's a carbon atom. So there's a carbon here, a carbon here, and a carbon here. It's three carbons. And then this double bonded OOH, this, this is an acid functional group. Like this, for example, is a two carbon organic acid. That is actually acetic acid or vinegar. This is equal to, it's the same thing as drawing the full version would be like this. All carbons make four bonds. So what's not bonded to another carbon is bonded to equal amount of hydrogen. And then this carbon has the double bonded oxygen and the OH. This is the same as this. See, this is much prettier to look at. It's just a shortcut way of drawing it. There's a carbon here, and then there's a carbon on the end. Anytime you see the bend, that's a carbon. Like this is a six carbon ring. Just a little bit of like looking at the pictures. Okay, now pH. What happens with pH is an acid. This hydrogen right here on this acid group sometimes can delocalize or come loose in water. And what you're left with when that happens is this oxygen now has a negative charge because the hydrogen that comes loose is positively charged. And when this happens, water being H2O, there's two electrons there to the oxygen, two electrons there, hydrogen, two free and lone pairs. Water has a partial positive and negative charge. The oxygen carries a partial negative charge and the hydrogens carry a partial positive charge on every water molecule. That's why water is able to dissolve salts like sodium chloride in ACL. The chlorine is negative because it carries the electrons. The sodium is positive. This positive and negatives are really attracted to the water because it has partial positives and negatives. That's why salt will dissolve in water because its charge attracts. That's why gas will not mix with water. Gas is a neutral molecule. It's a hydrocarbon, like this. This is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's an eight carbon long hydrocarbon. It's just a chain of carbon and hydrogen. There's no charge on this molecule anywhere. It's like a like gas. When this chain gets long enough, eventually you get an oil. It starts to get thicker. Since these are charges, they want to be with other charges, like water. So when you mix water and salt and gasoline or hydrocarbons, the gasoline wants to stay to itself because it's not charged. The water being charged will dissolve the salt. The salt dissolves in the water. The water separates from the gas. Everything wants to be with something similar. So when you've got an acid like this, when this hydrogen breaks off, now both of them have a charge. This is much more likely to dissolve in the water because it has a charge. So when you have something, um, let's take a like a alkaloid, for example. Most of them are ring-based. They're aromatic compounds most of the time. Let's say um, like this one here. All right, now, this is an organic base. Anytime you see a nitrogen, it's a base. Now, the way a free 
acid-base works, and acid-base extraction. This base can also gain or lose a hydrogen. It has a lone pair of electrons here not bound to anything, which is a partial negative zone. This is the free base form. There's no charge on this molecule. This molecule will not want to dissolve in water. And in the plant, sometimes it's in this form. So when you boil it and acidify it in the presence of an acid or a hydrogen, positively charged hydrogen, that's an acid. In the presence of this, this positively charged hydrogen will be attracted to this set of electrons. And when that positive charge sticks there, this whole area gains a net positive charge. In this form, with this positive charge, now this molecule will want to dissolve in water. And we take advantage of this property when we do an acid-base extraction. So you usually start off, you grind the material up, you add a, a mild acid, get the pH down. That turns whatever you're trying to extract into this charged form. It's now water-soluble, so you boil it. All of this stuff dissolves out into the water as a salt in, in acid form. Then you filter off the solids, um, defat it with some kind of solvent, which I'll talk about more in the extraction video. Once all of that's done, you're ready to try to isolate this molecule. But it's also in there with all kinds of dissolved salts and stuff from the plant. You don't want that. You just want this. All of your salts, see, are soluble in water. The alkaloid that you're after is also soluble in water in this charged form. Now what we do is we add a strong base. That brings the pH up. When we bring the pH high enough, the base cancels out the acid. This hydrogen comes back off, and now this molecule no longer has a positive charge. At this point, it don't want to be in the water anymore, but it still is. So when you mix it with like toluene or some kind of um, organic solvent like that, now it wants to be oil soluble or gas soluble. You know, a hydrocarbon will dissolve. So when you shake the water with the solvent, this molecule will be pulled out by the solvent in the free base form. And all of the salts and things that come with the plant will stay dissolved in the water. And then the last step, so I'll go into it more in the extraction video. You pull this now pure molecule in the hydrocarbon solvent. The last step is to either evaporate the solvent, um, boil it off, or do one more step and shake this with a mild acid to pull this back out of the solvent into water. Then you evaporate the water. Different processes are required by different alkaloids. Um, okay. That's all for this one. I have one more video. We'll talk briefly about the pH.